Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, True Crime with Jess Rose. Thanks for joining me again. Um, today's story, it isn't from a show, uh, it's it's from several online forums. And to be honest, I had heard about it when it first was on the news five years ago and it was such a disgusting case that it never really left me. And uh, it came up again and I thought, I've got to do it, but I will warn you, it, it is upsetting, and it's not just the cat, but because he is a child, and he, he, it's Cooper Harris, the little boy's name is, and he was 22 months old, so just show of his second birthday, and you know, these stories are very hard to do, I won't lie to you, my voice catches slightly, please bear with me. Okay, so like I say, his name's Cooper Harris. Beautiful, beautiful looking little lad. Little blonde head, blue eye, just gorgeous. And his dad is Justin Ross Harris. Now, in all the forums I've, I've found information from, they call him Ross Harris, um, which is obviously what he goes by, but his name is Justin Ross Harris. And... Mum's Leanna Taylor, and I'm ever sorry, <coughs> as last week was a bit sniffly, I've got a cough again, so bear with me. And they, as a family, lived in Georgia, in America. Now we go back to June the 18th, 2014. So six years ago, I apologise, six years ago. Um, now, the family day started as any other day, really. Uh, they got up, they had breakfast as a, you know, as a family. Now, Ross takes Cooper to daycare on his way to work because it's not far from where he works. So, he, he says that in the morning, they got ready. On the way to daycare and to work, they stop at a Chick-fil-A. I presume it's like a, a franchise over there. And, um... They had breakfast. Now, a lot, an awful lot of this story is caught on camera, whether it be CCTV, police cameras, police vest cameras, you know, an awful lot of it's caught on there. And they're seen at this Chick-fil-A at 8.57 in the morning. You see him holding Cooper. He's awake. You know, everything's fine when they're finished. Now, when they leave, Ross is and is supposed to, and does every day, drop Cooper off at daycare <coughs> before he goes to work, which is, you know, literally down the road. In the court trial, you do see the trial on, online. Um, they do a big like, map of where everything was, and it really wasn't far the, from the food place to the daycare to where he worked. And... <laughs> But instead of dropping Cooper off, Ross goes straight to work and it shows him pulling in in the family SUV into his car park and he works in the offices of Home Depot, um, or Depot, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, and it shows him going into his work building at 9.25. And at this point, Cooper used, as far as I can gather from what I've looked at, Cooper used to be in a front-facing car seat. He'd been switched to a rear-facing one. So, at 12.30pm, you see Ross leave the building, goes with a colleague to Home Depot, but the, the store, and buys some light bulbs, just, just some random stuff. It shows him going back to his vehicle opening the driver's side door, putting the bulbs in and closing the door. You see this. Um, it's all on camera. At 4.16, so we're talking seven hours, he leaves work, again shows Ross leaving work, gets into his car, drives for a very short amount of time, pulls into a shopping like, centre car park, Jumps out of his car, very kind of hysterical. Cooper's been in the car for seven hours. 
and they say that the heat that day in Georgia got to 92 degrees, which for us over here would have been in the 30s. But that's outside, so you can't imagine, or you can't imagine how hot it would have been in that car. So he jumps out of the car, drags Cooper out of the car. There's a lot of witnesses who've seen this. Um, it's a busy shopping centre, it's the afternoon. And he kind of lays Cooper on the floor, from what I can gather, um, feebly, feebly tries some CPR, and then, like, a good Samaritan comes over trying, you know, the police are called. He doesn't call them. He doesn't call the ambulance. No, Ross decides it's more important at this moment in time. Now, let, just let that sink in for a second. You've come out of work. You've got into your car. And whenever it was, but he believed. No, let me just point out that Cooper wasn't behind him. If you're a driver, so imagine you've got a rear-facing car seat behind you. It wasn't, so they're, left, they're on this side. Cooper was there. He was on the other side at the back. There. And he reckons it was only as he was turning Roy that he, he caught sight of Cooper's head. Re really? Um, I will warn you, <coughs> during this story... Um, I haven't bought anything that's been said, any of the defence whatsoever. I know there are cases out there where there has been accidents and children have been forgotten in hot cars. I, I get that and I am not commenting on those. I'm only commenting on this particular story. Um, they are my own opinions on it as well, as I always say in these stories. So like I say, he, believed, he, he said he was turning right, saw Cooper and jumped out but while all of this utter pandemonium's going on trying to resuscitate this boy who they believe had passed he'd, he'd long passed by then um ross is on the phone he's on the phone to the daycare and his his, his reasoning for that was he didn't want his wife turning up to collect cooper and and finding that he wanted to let him it's all very confusing, that bit, but while he's on the phone to the daycare, a police officer, because they were on, everyone was on the scene very, very quickly. <coughs> you see, well, sorry, you hear her trying to talk to him, and he shouts at her. He says, I'm on the phone. I've just found out my son's dead. Now, at this point, although it said Cooper would have been, he didn't know that. He didn't know for sure. He just threw that out there and then it said that he calmed down and he just started standing there with his arms crossed just watching all of this go on around him not in shock can i add not like I, he was unaware of every it, there was just nothing really there very question not obviously very questionable so the police from the get-go were starting to believe this wasn't some devastating, heartbroken father who's made a you know a life changing mistake. You know this wasn't that. <clears throat> so they put him in the police car. Ambulance comes for Cooper, obviously, and um, you see footage of him in the police car. I'm gonna make you sick in a second, and I'll tell you why. Um, he's going. Back and forth between, oh my God, you know, my son, my boy, what have I done? And then calming down. Could be classed as shock, could be classed as, you know, it doesn't, it, you know, it, no one knows how you behave in that circumstance. You can't, the police do say, you know, you can't, there aren't steps to how you should behave in these circumstances. You know, that's understood. But he turned around, he's been in the car minutes. It's too hot in here. I, I said that. It's too hot. I'm too hot. <laughs> That's what he says. He has left his 22-month-old child in the car for seven hours in 92-degree searing 
hate or die. No one knows what that poor little boy went through in those hours. And he's a bit hot after a couple, couple of minutes. In. How they kept their hands off him, I, I, I genuinely don't know. I don't know. So, they're, they're sickened, you know, at this point. He's just not... Not that, like I say, they do say, there's not a, a behaviour that you should have or, or, you know, that they say, this is how people should behave. You should cry for this long and you should be shocked for this long. But this just wasn't anything they'd come up against. So they were suspicious from the very beginning. So they bring him into the police station and, and there's footage of him in there as, you know, as the rules is. And again, it says they didn't realise the cameras were on them. Look, and I'll say who that is in a minute. So you've got Ross sat there and he's rocking and he stands up and <laughs> all of this malarkey with his bottle of water, by the way, you know, he's constantly drinking his water because he is very hot. Um, and when the police come in, he's very calm, shakes their hands, you know, even makes like little, you know, trivial jokes, whether they may be, but he, he makes small talk in during the thing. So he goes through his day and explains, you know, what had happened and police just aren't buying it. Well, Leanne's not, Leanna, sorry, Leanna is notified. And the police leave the room when she, no, she's in the room and they bring Ross into her. First thing she does is run up and hug him. Again, my opinion, but I, I, no matter how much you love your partner, you've just, found out that he's left your baby in a car for seven hours to die and she runs up and hugs him and I thought you know she hugs him does she slap him after you know does she, what was she think no she sits down on kind of her knees and looks up at him and she goes did you say too much that's what she asks him. So, of course, when the police are watching this, they're looking at her and I as well. Did you say too much? That's what she said to him. Not, what the hell was you thinking? What have you done? You know, having to be dragged off him. No, 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 no. Did you say too much? So, <coughs> all of this is adding to the suspicion. Like I say, on both of them at this point now. They start, while well, they've got him in, they keep him in, obviously in custody. And while they're investigating, they go through his phone and, um, you know, they bring in various devices and stuff. Because they're just not buying this as an accident at all. Now, Liana is, um, she's brought in, but she's released from because very early on, they can't really find anything relating to Leanna, so all looking at Ross at this moment. And I'll tell you why. While his son was dying in his SUV in the searing heat, Ross was messaging... No, Ross wasn't a great husband at all. He was having an awful lot of extramarital affairs. Now, this doesn't make him guilty. You know, you can not love your wife and love you and, and, and love your son and be a great father, you know, no one's saying that. Um but while his son was dying outside, he was like messaging up to six women, sexting them, should I say. A few of them underage and sending like nude pictures to them. That same day, the same day I'm talking to you, and they realised all these extramarital affairs. This was not a good guy. Then they started to look at his um, internet searches. And they found a video on there. And the video was of a... He looked like he was a professional. This guy was on the video. <coughs> and he was sat in a car. And showed... What happens in a car when it, when it gets heated throughout the day. It was more of a... Um, video for, for pets really 
you know, it was for children, but to show if you leave your dog in the car, you know, what can happen. And this had been viewed, I think, a week beforehand. So you viewed that and you still did. You know, he tried to say it was, you know, I, I watched that and I, I thought, God, I could never do that to my son. But you did it a week later. Um, there was uh, messages that there was found, you know, I just wish I could get rid of my family completely. You know, I wish I wasn't in this family life. He wanted out <coughs> and it's believed that the only way to do that was to get rid of Cooper which would, in turn, get rid of Leanna. You know, now I'm going to tell you my own little thoughts before I tell you the rest of the story. I, back when I was looking at this story, did hear that there was similar internet searches on Leanna's devices. There was obviously the question she asked him, did you say too much? She divorced him afterwards very quickly, very, very quickly. And she never gave an interview. You know, and although there was... Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Because obviously that doesn't mean much. When she got to the daycare centre, it was said that when they said Cooper hadn't come in that day, she was like, oh, Ross probably left him in the car. That's been said that she said that. What? Not, they must have gone home sick. I need to phone him. Why is he in daycare? He must have left him in the car. There's so many question marks, you know, about, about this, in my opinion, regarding her. Now, she did give an interview in 2017. So, two and a half years after the fact. <coughs> and it's only about eight minutes long. It's not very long at all. You can see it online. And I was disgusted watching it. And I'll tell you what. She spoke about Cooper for probably about two minutes out of that section. And the rest was, you know, she was angry. And she divorced him because of the extramarital affairs. But she didn't believe that he did that on purpose. She stood by him. And to top it all off, Liam was the star witness in Rossi's um, trial. She was the star witness for the defence, sorry. For, for the defence. <coughs> Basically came forward and said, you know, she didn't believe he'd done that. She's divorced the guy, but she didn't believe he'd done that. See, I'm kind of contradicting myself. And you do go back and forth on it because... You find out he has all these affairs. I said, I, of course you would, you would, you would, you would do that. But to go to his defence, no. Even if you didn't, maybe believe he done it on purpose. I couldn't defend the guy. I I couldn't because whether it was on purpose or not, your child's dead because of him, because of whether it was neglect or, you know not thinking or whatever kind of sinister excuse you want to give, why would you defend that person that your your child's not there anymore? You don't want nothing more to do with them. You're divorcing them but just because they're cheating on you, though, not because he killed your son, in no matter what way you want to say it in your brain. So I have my own real um, theories about why she did that. And, you know, please drop a comment in. Let me know what your theories have been on that. But I just think, did it come up that, you know, if you don't defend me, I'll throw you under the bus too? I don't know. That's just me. That's just me throwing it out there. There's just so many question marks over her. And I could be wrong. She could be this heartbroken mother. But she just didn't come across that way and you might say well at the beginning who are you to say how you should be have I do say that a lot you know who are we to comment on how you should be have it was two and a half years later when she done the interview surely by that time your feelings would would have settled you know you would know how you felt by that point and surely that anger 
would still be at the forefront of anything else. It's a very confusing, very confusing case for her, for him. Not so much. Obviously, uh, the defence wanted to say he was a great father. It was an accident. He didn't. He, he never meant this in a in a you know in his wildest dreams to do this. The prosecution went in. You know, they went in, they he brought up all his extramarital affairs. The messages, sexting he was sending on the day. Um, they also said something that was really sad. When he went back to his car at lunchtime, that Cooper possibly could have still been saved. But, and this, you do see him open the car, put the stuff in and close the door. Um... But they said there was a smell, as you can imagine, that would have been in the car. Especially when it got in at 4.16. It would have been a horrific smell by then. But it took him a little while to pull over. To be like, oh my God. He only realised when he was turning at an intersection. It just, none of it makes sense to me. And I have watched stories and I have. They said that last year there was 38 cases of children dying in hot cars where they've been forgotten by their parents. Uh, and, you know, you see some of them and the, you're angry, but you, you can see that it, it, was, it wasn't malicious. It's very hard to say what it would, but it, it was an accident. This, to do this to a job. And when I thought about it, Cooper was awake when they left that Chick-fil-A. Now, I know a 22-month-old child natters. They natter. They, they're loud. They're, they're talking. You know, they're, they're, even if they're a quiet child, they're kind of... You can hear them. How could he not hear him as he was getting out of the car to go into work? Why switching to a rear facing? He was, you know, he was nearly two. Okay, some people might still, I know the rules have changed and stuff, so I don't quite, you know, don't come at me for that, but I'm just, I, oh, I'm just so disgusted by this whole cat and what he did to this, and that he could have been saved. He could have possibly been saved. So the trial started in April 2015. And lasted a month. Ross was found guilty on all eight charges against him, including malice murder, which was the one that Liana tried to get him off with, saying it wasn't malicious, he didn't mean it. Um, felony murder and some of those sending sexual messages to a minor, including the nude pics. Um, now, the sentencing, he wasn't sentenced till May 2016, and he was sentenced to life plus 34 years so he'll never get out he'll never get out of the american system but i just it just sickens me to the pit of my stomach this one does it it did then and it still does now you know the children stories that i could never do them at the time you know it takes a little while to be able to actually talk about them and you know, and be able to do these these stories because they are little little blonde haired blue old little boy and you see them at football games as a family and see a lot of videos of him and oh it's just beautiful. He really and you you can't imagine what he went through in those hours just being left in that car in the heat. You've seen the car park. And it's Georgia and America. Their summers are not like ours. Their, their summers are summers. You know, the, the heat must... And then to hear him on the hot in the back of the police car. Just, oh, it gets you so angry. You know, like I say about her, it is my own theory on it. She could be completely... There was just certain things that she said and the way she went about things and especially rushing into the police room, hugging him and then going, did you say too much? Oh, sorry, what? I don't know if I said her, her 
point with that in the, in her interview that she gave in 2017 was Ross talks a lot. He, 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 he talks uh, 10 to the dozen. So what she meant by that was, what did you say to them to make them arrest you? What did you... But she didn't say that. She said, did you say too much? They're quite specific words. No, my God, what did you say to him to get him get you locked up? What what the hell's going on? Did you say too much? It's a very questionable sentence to have said, and the excuse can be made. She's just found out a child's dead. You know, she's just found out her husband's left him in the car all day. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about her, but him, him, my mind's made up, and no one would change more. And thank goodness the jury felt the same. Because he'll, he'll never see the light of day. And what a selfish, horrible, greasy-looking man. Have a look at him. Horrible. Oh, just awful-looking bloke. And messaging minors as well. And there was just nothing good about this guy at all. Yet she tried to say he was a great father. Just, it's, it's one of them stories where I get so angry talking about it. And yet there's so many bits that are unfinished even these few years on you know it's still a bit like but why did this happen why did that so i've got a lot of unanswered questions in my own head to be honest about this but this is everything i found out about the case and i just wanted to share it with you you know obviously as because i'm doing the story you know summer will be coming around again so you know, if you're not going to forget your phone, Jesus, don't forget your kid. But this wasn't that case. This wasn't. This was, he remembered everything. He remembered his light bulbs at lunchtime. He remembered to message minors, you know, during the day while he's supposed to be at work. Just a horrible, horrible man. And that was the story of the little Cooper Harry story. And, yeah, thank you again for joining me real sad one this one is but if you've got any comments or um you know you got like or or subscribe i'd really appreciate it and just thank you so much again for joining me thank you thank you